He's back. Don't sit on the wire. Good, good, good little uh, advice there. Let's give a round of applause for this volunteer. Woo! Woo! Volunteers. How's Comic Con? Life and blood. Okay. Who drew this on my screen? Okay. I'm not used to be like wired in, so I'm just gonna throw it right Because then I can't sit on it. Okay, let's start again. Here we go. So a dragon. So, if I was working with a client, it would be more of a feedback with them kind of thing. But because I don't have a client, you guys are gonna be like my client. So what I'm gonna start with, um, make a new layer. And by the way, there's a lot of resources online for how to use technicalities in Photoshop. Uh, I'm not going to go into all of that, but I'll just touch it from time to time. Um, so yeah, so I guess what I like to start doing is just doing a lot of uh, silhouette thumbnails. So I might start with, uh, you know, maybe a stereotypical dragon idea. And if it's just for, just for myself, I might like to do a series of thumbnails because it's usually the first ideas you come up with are always the most boring. The most things that are right in your head, like, okay, dragon, what am I thinking? Uh, small, or like, you know, something just out of pop culture. But um, if you start getting like the uh, past, the stereotypical things, and just do a lot of thumbnails, which are like just small sketches, you can get into more imaginative and more original ideas. And you look back on the first ones and you're like, what was I thinking? Okay, so. Let's just draw a dragon. How I would imagine it. And it's going to be very rough. Um, and by the way, I, I have a lot of resources online. So if you want to look up more technical stuff, uh, you can look up my DeviantArt or like Facebook. I have a, a FAQ available. And you can check out like a lot of stuff like that as well. I also have a YouTube channel, and I like to put up lots of stuff like that, and resources, and you can also check out all the uh, art channels that I look at, and I learn from. Okay, so that is one. So now what I'm going to do is just forget about it for a bit, and do another one. And uh, if you have any questions from the audience, now would be a great time to ask them. Yep. I'll just get a microphone so everyone can hear you. It's near the feedback. Just wondering why your preference for that brush is not. Sure. Um, so yeah, um, I get asked a lot, what brushes do you use? Um, and specifically for this one, it's just a hard brush that has a bit of character to it. Um, you can use different brushes for texture and stuff. But for silhouettes, it's good to just like lock it in with uh, just a really hard brush that you can just carve out with. Um, you know, once I'm getting into more kind of textural special effects, so to speak, I'll use, you know, maybe blood splatter brushes or custom stuff like that, or maybe like a chain brush if I have little details I want to put on. These are all just downloaded from DeviantArt. You can get all sorts of different stuff, but the, uh, the custom brushes that you get with Photoshop, they're all just you know, fine as well. Um, it's just a matter of experimentation. Um, it's it's just like a traditional medium, you know? Um, the brushes aren't going to make you better, per se. Uh, it's better to learn it kind of the hard way, and then try and speedy process up with brushes. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm just using a, a standard one for now, and then once I get into more detail later on, once we've decided upon one, We'll uh, get into more of the detail stuff. Does that answer your question a little bit? Yeah, no worries. Anybody else have a little question? Yeah. Can we get a microphone to this young lady? Oh, is she sure? Maybe. <laughs> And it's, it's good to work uh, pretty small when you're doing this. Because um, if you can get something to work on like a smaller scale, like 
especially with things like magic cards and stuff like that, you notice that they're really great illustrations because they're like they work on a small scale, but then if you look at them online and they're huge, it's like wow, so much detail. Uh, but having a strong silhouette and having like identifiable shapes in your piece, and especially when designing like game characters and stuff like that, you want your characters to have all different silhouettes and different shapes. So that, for instance, if you're they're running at you and you go, oh, you have to shoot them really quick. You know which one's a good guy, which one's a bad guy, and where to shoot them and stuff like that. Uh, so it's great to like start off small and then you can always blow it up bigger because the initial uh, small thumbnail isn't going to be like, you're not going to have much detail in it, so there's not going to be um, you know, any anything lost like that. And yeah, as I say, this is going to be a very like, uh, a loose dragon theme, it's not going to be like anything in particular. I'll do probably 10 to 15 of these little sketches and then we'll vote on which one you like the best. So let's, uh, let's mix it up a little bit. Let's, let's have like a little a guy, maybe a man drawing on here. Maybe he's like, I'm a man and I've got a queen. And then a little dragon tail as well. Any other uh, questions while I'm doing this? Yeah, go for it, man. Uh, can we get a microphone to this man over here? What's your inspiration? What's my inspiration? Uh, that's a good question. Um, short answer, life. Uh, everything. But um, yeah, uh, all sorts of things, man. Um, obviously, the demon stuff, like other artists, movies, TV, video games. Um, you know, lots of stuff. Uh, this inspiration comes from everywhere, really. Uh, the natural world, like watching documentaries, like David Attenborough, my bro, he's, yeah. Animal, the animal kingdom is amazing. And like, when you do like life studies, and then you uh, do lots of animal studies as well, and you do like humans and animals, then you can maybe combine the two. It's great to be able to like learn the rules of the fundamentals and then you learn how to break them as well. So um, yeah, inspiration. Um, other artists are a huge inspiration for me. There's this uh, you know, notion you should never be able to copy anyone. Like, oh, no, no, no. But you know, if you're just starting out and if you're learning, and as long as you go past that and uh, do it your own skin later, there's nothing wrong with emulating another artist or um, learning from that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a continuous thing. Um, I go into that in my YouTube videos and on my frequently asked questions at FAQ as well. But yeah, does that answer your question a little bit, man? No worries. Cool. Uh, we have another question. Yep, go for it. A bit of both really, but it depends on the project. Um, did everyone hear that? It was, it was about how much freedom do you have yeah, when you're conceptualizing a creature or a character. Um, I guess it will vary from job to job. Like, uh, I had a job recently uh, for a board game in America, a bit like Dungeons and Dragons, and they had just a general brief. Uh, one of the ones I had to do was a, a zombie crap, and it had like, you know, this monster had a little backstory, and it was more about the general story, not so much the look. So it had, you know, this is a crab that is a giant venomous monster in a deep, and it bites a victim, lets them into the wild, into the, like, bites a human, lets them back into the population, and then they infect everyone, and then they all feel really hot, so they have to go back to the ocean, and, and then they get eaten by this crab. So that was just so cool, and I was like, wow, so I was. I was modeling this crab and I looked at lots of reference and I was going through my process. And um, yeah, it just turned out that like, you know, I, I went for more of a, 
kind of spidely, venomous, like punched over, very disgusting kind of crab, and it really just fit the story. But it um, it really just depends on the kind of job you're doing and um, what sort of uh, you know what sort of client you have and how much freedom. Um, I did an art test recently for uh, Games Workshop, like Warhammer. Um, and I found it, um, it was, you know, very, I had a big learning curve, and it was, um, it was quite hard. I didn't get in, unfortunately, but um, I pretty much knew all the reasons for that. And it was pretty much because it was a very, like, they have such an established brand that you have to pretty much be like baking a cake in terms of recipe. You have to, like, nail every proportion. That oak, oak space has to look completely accurate, number of teeth. And... Because I'm more about the conceptualizing and like the creation, it, um, and that was more illustration. Um, it wasn't you know naturally good for me, so I just had to adapt and had to learn a lot of stuff. So that's probably why I didn't get it. Yeah, uh, and I'll, I'll probably try again later, but it was just a learning experience, and there's nothing wrong with failure. You know, you've got to fail like a thousand times before you kind of succeed, and everything you do is like you know you learn from the next one, from the previous one, from the next one and stuff like that. So it's a great way to, uh, to learn, you know? Failure is the best way. So uh, yeah, that was a bit of a ramble, but I hope that kind of answered the question. No worries. Do we have any other questions from anybody? Yep, good for that. How long did it take to What was that, sorry? How long did it usually take to try to uh, yeah, uh, how long did it take? Um, probably, uh, you know, if you, if, I haven't had much experience myself with uh, in-studio kind of work, because I'm in Perth, it's a much more uh, isolated thing, and I do a lot of work through the web. Uh, but there'll be like, uh, usually, you know, we'll have a deadline for the actual project, uh, but then it can take like, you know, a couple of months or a week, but for each piece, um, for like rougher stuff, maybe like an hour or two, or up to a couple hours. But for very detailed illustrations and stuff, you want to have like, it, it, it's more of a 10 to 20 hours, or I don't know, I guess the short answer would be as long as it takes. <laughs> it takes as long as it takes. Um, there's no set, oh, okay, if I spend an hour on this, it'll look good. No, it's, it's just, if it doesn't look good, try again, or like, mix it up, or, you know, for instance, if I, was, if I work on this guy, and I'm like, okay, what's going on here, and then I'm like, bored of it, I could maybe flip it horizontally. And then I could like, completely switch his face around, and I don't know, it's, you've got to keep, uh, keep experimenting, and keep like, uh, yeah, just keep working through it, man. So yeah, that doesn't look much like a drag, but yeah. But, that's a part of the process. Um, but yeah, um, if you look at my YouTube work tutorials as well and uh, stuff like that, you can see a lot of my uh, how long each one took and stuff like that as well. But yeah, any other questions from the crowd? Oh, yep, this guy over here. Would you say it's really important to know what a shot and is it for the shot? Yes. Yeah, so it's really important to know what a shot is and what's it? Lots of drawing. Um, it definitely helps with speed. Um, you shouldn't be worried about speed when you're starting out. Um, you know, there's a lot of awesome speed painting groups on Facebook and all that where you see top level artists being like, I did this in two minutes. And it's like this biggest thing, you're like, <laughs> But, um, you know, as you're starting out, it doesn't matter. Like, it, as I said, it takes as long as it takes. Uh, but, you know, as for shortcuts, um, like on my Wacom, I've got a bunch of shortcuts here as well, buttons. Um, and uh, I've got a scroll wheel where I can go through rotation and stuff like that, but um, you can just uh, research them and um, look it up online and you just learn with experience really. Yeah, you learn by using the program and just with, you know, just continual practice. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it's, I, I still use a lot of the file do this instead of the actual shortcut, so it's definitely not essential. Okay, so, I've got a whole bunch of thumbnails, some of them are dragon related, and I think now we'll uh, resize them all, and then start picking our favorites. 
And yeah, when you do this many like little quick sketches, you often like just completely forget, well I do anyway, like the shapes you do. So like seeing them again is really interesting. And you can be like, oh yeah, that one. Were there any other questions while I just do this one? No worries. So yeah, I'm just uh Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, go on. Yeah. I think it's uh, up to personal preference, really. Um, if it's for like more, as I say, a video game or like more uh, graphic kind of stuff like that, uh, I find silhouettes are a good way to just get a quick idea of the character down. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, sketching traditionally as well is a uh, you know an essential part of it. Um, you can't just go into Photoshop and be like, I don't know how to draw. You have to like you kind of both, and one of them will help the other, and it's like a whole kind of collaborative process, really. Um, just find what works for you, I'd say. Um, try a whole range of like different mediums. Um, if you like using, you know, painting and stuff, that could be a great way to do it. But it's really um, up to you, and it's just have your tutorials online and see what works for you, really. Um, yeah, after that. <laughs> okay. So, we've got a whole bunch of little dudes. How many? Nine. Alrighty, now we're gonna vote. It's gonna be the weakest link says goodbye. Okay, so I'll get you to put your hands up only once. This is like sudden death. Okay, who's came for number one? Oh! I'm offended. I'm just kidding. Okay. No. Who's king for number two? Okay. I think that's about seven. I made the mistake when I first did this last weekend in Brisbane of being like, okay, one, two, three, four, and everyone's like, because I was calling out the numbers. Okay. Number three. One. Number four. Oh, were you in number three as well? Sorry. Okay, number four. Three. Number five. Oh, that's nice. Number six. Whoa. Whoa. Number seven. Okay, number eight. And number nine. Alrighty, I think we have a winner. Let's give a round of applause to everyone. Put their hands up. And number six, who won the grand prize? Okay, everybody else gets hidden. Sound effects really help when you do the characters. Okay. We have a win. We have a win. I said I like the carry if you didn't mind. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is grab this dude, copy, new document. I like to work at uh, A3 and the standard resolution for print is 300, but I like to work at 600 when I'm on my own computer. But I'm gonna keep it 300 because this laptop is not as good. Uh, for Photoshop, you need a system with like lots of juicy RAM. I think mine at home has about 16 gigabytes, which is like, and I can just do whatever, and 600 DPI images. Um, but it's not like, you know, it just depends on what your end product's going to be. Uh, it's perfectly fine to work small, it just depends on you're going to print it out. Um, I do a lot of prints for shows, so I have to work pretty nicely on a print level. Okay, so we've got Buffman here. Let's start 
chiseling away at this silhouette. So, I'm usually not very organized with my layers. It usually gets up to like 200, 300, and I just get like, oh, what if I want to go back? So let's make a new layer for every single thing I do. But I'm going to try and show you a nice way to keep your layers in order. So what you can do is put your base silhouette in a group, and then this thing here is a layer mask. So what that does is it has like a black and white kind of system. So anything black gets kind of erased, and anything white, you see that, is all shown. So now instead of like permanently erasing the silhouette, which would be fine if you're going through it, you can just you know erase and if you want, you're like oh get rid of it, and then you're like hi, and you can see it again. You're like, oh there it is. So yeah. So and this is just like one way you can do it. Um, and I'll you know it's just a loose and loose kind of system. What you can also do is just keep painting on top in black and white and then erasing and then um, just you know, flatten it and move on. So, I'm going to add a bit of uh, definition to this guy. He's already pretty damn good. Right, look at his hunky muscles. Okay. And yeah, like the technical kind of side of things, it's, it just depends what works for you, really. Uh, you can trial a whole different sort of systems. Uh, there's all sorts of different stuff you can do. As I mentioned before, it's great to uh, flip your canvas to get a new perspective on it. Maybe he's going to have a big kind of claw. And maybe he's going to have like a little, little baby hand as well. Okay. So I'm going to give him like a dragony head and then like a weird kind of body. So now what I'm going to do is just go in and start getting a big tone and maybe adding a bit of texture to get the, uh, the silhouette down. So what you can do is uh, merge this area and then I've got this like the whole silhouette and then what I can do is make a new layer, copy it, trap it in there, that's like a lock layer and then what I do is I, like anything I draw is just going to become on the silhouette. So you know, if I turn it off, it's like everywhere. And if I turn it on, it's just like that. So it's just like little tricks like that. You know, again, they're not essential and you can do it the other way. It's just something you learn as you spend a lot of time. And it wouldn't be the same with a traditional medium, you know, by like using paint or like, you know, doing ink and stuff and uh, charcoal, you just learn through uh, experience and through uh, lots of practice and, yeah, like research. Look into your favorite artist, look how they do it. There's a lot of resources online. And then, um, yeah, try and emulate that and practice. So, although I have like a bajillion brushes here, I probably use about two to three for like mainly everything. And then I have all the others just for custom kind of texture work. Like, if I want a specific feel, or if I want to like, have something, uh, you know, like a special effect as I was saying. But this brush here is just like a standard kind of circle brush, but with a little, little bit of a character on it. And uh, these can all be downloaded through my DeviantArt as well. I've got, on my page I've got like, inspiration, influences, brushes, and they're all just links to the ones I've downloaded. Uh, but yeah, you, know, you can totally make your own as well in Photoshop. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with it. I coming out, not too bad. So yeah, let's keep going with this dude. Alright, uh, it's good to work small because then you get a sense of the whole picture. You don't want to be doing this, you don't want to be going, okay, what does his face look like? Because then like you spend an hour and 
it's just, it's not the whole thing, is it? You want to you keep looking at it on a smaller scale so that it works as an entire image before you get into the nitty gritty. And so what I'm doing here with the eyedropper tool is I'm just grabbing the color and then painting it on and then grabbing it on the shade in this case. And that's just a good way to work. Um, you do want to keep, uh, when you get into color, grabbing from the color slider here because it can sometimes uh, dilute your colors a little bit. But when you're just getting the black and white form down, it's good to uh, just you know, jump around and have fun. Were there any other specific questions while I'm just remembering this guy out for a little bit? Anybody? All right, yeah. But if you do, just uh, raise your hand and we'll get a mic to you. And we'll do. So this is kind of like a rhinery kind of dragon dude. Maybe I'll give him like some tiny little... Oh, what is that thing? Yeah. Maybe I'll give him some tiny little pussy like little wings. Like, I'm a dragon. Hey guys. I want to be a dragon too. Hey, small. I worked out with him all day. Oh yeah, we need to give him some like big old picks. Um, but yeah, as, as this is just a loose kind of demo thing, it's just about like a general thing. And you see like when the first like sketch I started with, it was a very like, you know, ooh, I'm a dragon. And then like, it's gone to like such a different kind of concept that I had no idea what I was going to do. And it just comes with like lots of uh, experimentation and getting into your, you know, trying to do different stuff and uh, getting past the boring ideas that you might think of first and then getting into something that's a bit more different and a bit more, a bit more fun. Another thing that's really good to check out is uh, Gumroad tutorials. Um, there's a lot of awesome free content on YouTube, of course, but a big thing that's just kicking off is a site called Gumroad, and they have uh, a lot of like, you know, high quality HD tutorials for like maybe two bucks or five bucks. And just because it's paid, it means that the content is a lot better, and you actually get industry kind of professionals who are like, you know, also doing additional demos and stuff. And you can find some really great tutorials. Like, I've bought so many of them and they're like really useful just to like get an idea of how they do it and you can get some really long ones. So, oh yeah, I recommend everyone's homework for this class is uh, just check out Gumroad tutorials because uh, they're really cool. Alrighty. Dragon Boxer Four thing thing. So you can tell this is a casual demo, isn't it? But yeah, once you get all that in, it doesn't have to be pretty. Um, and yeah, this is like this is probably still a thumbnail scale. If you had more time and you were like were trying to concept characters, you could do a whole bunch like these. Like I could just bring up all these characters in grayscale. And, um, you know, you've only spent like maybe an hour's work or like half an hour, and it's like, you've got a whole range of different characters. So what I might start doing now is start introducing some color. And what you can do, uh, there's a lot of different ways to color artwork. Um, you can go in and just manually start painting on color. Uh, but what I like to do, and this is a good way to take your traditional sketching as well, and you can scan them. That's what I do a lot of the time as well. I'll, I'll start off with a sketchbook, and then I'll scan it and paint it up in Photoshop. Um, so what you do is you have your grayscale image, and then you make a new layer in a group, if you like. And set it to, uh, there's all these different layer types you can have. Normal just lets you paint normally. Uh, multiply makes it so that you only paint on the kind of uh, white kind of areas and it kind of just influences everything. But there's a whole bunch here, like screen, uh, sorry, these are all in multiply, but 
screen makes it so that it's only on what you've already painted. Overlay kind of just tints it like that. Soft light, another, and there's like hard light, and there's all these different just styles you can do. And these are great for just like experimenting. And if you feel like stuck, if you've got a piece that's a long way. Um, and again, these are just trial and error. Like, there's all these here, and I use probably like three or four of them. But yeah, a good way to start is just to have an overlay there, and then you just um, you can kind of tint your artwork. And then obviously, once you've got just the color down, you can also just completely change it, if you like, by just adjusting it. So I could like make him a whole different range of colors. What sort of color do you think it should be? Maybe, maybe pink? Pink sounds good. And then you can make a different saturation. Like, less saturated is more medium color, and more saturated is like, color. So yeah, it's, it's really up to you. And um, so yeah, now that I've got uh, an overlay there with all the color, I can, uh, and yeah, multiply kind of is better for when you've got just a black and white art that you want to ask you a question. <laughs> just keeps putting a hand up this way. Uh, multiply is better when you just have like a black and white line art, and you can like so like if you had just like a little face. And then if you had a multiplier there in a group then it would only paint on the white kind of area. So it, it won't go over the black kind of thing. And just because this is a kind of a gray spell, it was going over a bit, but yeah, no worries. So now that I have like the base down, and you can like do as much uh, like editing of the base before you actually start painting if you like. Like if I wanted, I could make another different layer, maybe a screen, and then maybe I'd make all these spikes kind of red. And these are just like little, little quick ways you can like edit your artwork. If I wanted to add like maybe a splattery pattern, I could get a maybe a splatter brush, and then just add that. And as it's screen, it'll only go on what I've already painted, so I could add it like something like that. Uh, but yeah, you know, um, using good colors is uh, another thing that just comes with practice. Um, you learn all about complementary colors and, you know, different sort of color schemes. And it's great to look in nature and, like, you know, different animals and stuff like that. Because, like, tropical fish and just, you can get inspiration from all over. So now that I've got, uh, you know, some basic alterations of the of the base grayscale image down. Um, you can just start normally painting if you like. Um, and as this is a kind of a demo, it's a bit of a speedy approach. So it'll look a bit more rough. But now I'm just going to start carving away and just refining this kind of weird uh, rhino purple deep fried guy. <laughs> so yeah. Were there any other uh, questions while we keep going? If you do, pop your hand up. I'll be happy to help out if I can. So now I'm just going to start eye dropping. And you can also manually pick like a lighter color and then just start putting it in like that. And there's all these little, you know, tricks you can use, but at the end of the day, you just got to get an idea down and uh, get it to a presentable kind of level and work on the whole thing as a whole and then you get a piece to a certain kind of degree. It's also a good idea to uh, have a focal point. So for like this case, I might start, you know, uh, detailing the face a little bit more while keeping the whole thing in mind. And I've got like a navigator here which lets me look at it as a silhouette and as a very small image the entire time. So that's a great way to 
Just remind yourself how it's going and keep in check. And keep in mind the entire picture. So yeah. And again I might uh, switch around. And the other masters used to do this as well, the traditional. You can just get a mirror and hold it up to your painting and look at it and be like, oh, okay. And you just get a new sense of where you've gone wrong. Because if you're like looking at a piece for a while, you can just get used to it. And you'll find like different different things about it that you didn't see the first time. And again, like if you if you lock it in with white. And then what you can do is uh, simply make a new layer, maybe set it to multiply. And if I want to give him yellow teeth, all I have to do is set up yellow. And I just lightly shade it in like that. And it just goes over the white areas. Maybe I'll give him some like Blue pants. Maybe we got a little. We got a little. Wait. That's the stuff. I'm, I'm feeling. I'm feeling some some polka dots. You can tell I'm a serious artist. I take my job very serious. Yeah, that's pretty bright. Yeah, that's the good little shorts, man. There, 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 there. Look at those thunder flies. Oh, yeah. You ain't got nothing on small, man. Small, but nothing on me. Look at that. He's like, oh, oh. This comes from the church. <laughs> he needs a, he needs a dumbbell. I'm just gonna move his tail, so... Green the Oh, let's give him like a... Like a little tattoo. He loves his mom. But yeah. There's a, I hope this has been somewhat fun. I think I've got about 10 minutes left. So if there's any final questions, I'm sort of shooting my way now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Is that what you like? Sorry, guys. Sorry? Um, yeah, well, my YouTube channel is just called The Art of Austin Mangler. So if you just uh, uh, search my name, Austin Mangler, I'll write it back to you. Uh, and it will come up on uh, YouTube. I've also got uh, my booth, just near the entrance over there. So if you guys wanted to say hi afterwards, you can come up to the front and say hi, or you can follow me to the, uh, oh, can you see that? So, I like wrote it down and then I just completely went away from it. Uh, but yeah, you can just follow me afterwards for my booth. Uh, we're open to six, I think. So yeah, if you want to come by, that'd be awesome. I got a question. Yeah, no worries. Um, I hear there's some version control software for Photoshop. Have you ever tried any or was that version control? Or? Yeah. No, man, I haven't heard of that one. Yeah. I'll have to check that out now. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Sorry about that. Man. No worries. Google. I would suggest Google. So yeah, I'm just uh, going in, grabbing turns. I might try to experiment with some more textures if I want. Just different brushes. Yeah, go for it. Alright, uh, first of all, that's a really, really good outdoor to do. Yeah, cool. Um, it's a bit rushed, but <laughs> kind of. Um, just asking, how long have you been doing it for and what's your favorite category of drawing? 
Yeah, I, uh, I've been drawing my whole life, you know. Um, started sketching as a kid. Um, I was really influenced by, you know, like Looney Tunes and um, I watched this movie as a kid called uh, Small Soldiers. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's uh, a really, like, it was a bit of a smaller movie, like wasn't a big hit or anything, but just like the creature design in it and like the characters and how all the bad guys were like the good guys, like the, the, the monsters and all that were actually the protagonists. And I collected all the books and I drew the characters until I could get them right and, and just went insane and just like kept practicing and it really got me into just creature and character design and you know things like uh, Shaun of the Dead, uh, you know, uh, horror comedy, mixing up expectations, um, that sort of stuff is just so much fun. Um, and yeah, like, you know, I love, you know, the video game kind of art, like Warhammer, Diablo, um, you know, kind of wizard games and all these kind of fantasy, dark sci-fi and stuff like that. And um, yeah, you know, I think that really translates in my art. Um, but yeah, you know, I've just been growing for ages, but it's only kind of recently I've been like really taking it way more seriously. Like, but, but not too recently, but yeah, I, I'm glad I did start taking it seriously because you just gotta keep practicing and keep uh, experimenting, keep studying, and um, yeah, you get there again. Yeah, does that answer your question a little bit? Any other questions? Yeah, yes, sir. I just want to be always uh, start with a uh, uh, silhouette. I think I've got to start with a uh, sketch and then do a little Yep, uh, silhouette is just one way to do it. Um, but yeah, I, I always do a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, you don't want to just get stuck on repeat, you know, you want to just experiment and keep trying different things. Um, I'm always like, you know, doodling in my sketchbook and just doing lots of just like faces and characters and just sketches and then the best ones of those I might scan and then I'll paint them up in Photoshop as well. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's not the one thing I do, but it's just a great way to uh, get a whole character down in a really quick way. Um, so yeah, just experiment. <laughs> Custom stuff? Yeah, yeah, custom brushes and Photoshop. Um, uh, not, not neat, but uh, yeah, as I say, for like special kind of things you want, like you've got a whole range of brushes you can use. Like, you know, if I wanted to add some birdies, I can use that. Uh, so maybe some trees in the background. And then there's a whole range you can download. And, you know, obviously, we need a fundamental kind of skill to be able to use them well. Like, you can't just be like, oh man, trees. But, um, you know, it's, it's all about practice and all these brushes as well, you can completely edit. So, you know, if I want to have the trees scatter, I can go like that. Or if I just want, like, a, just a flat tree, I can just completely turn it off and have, like, just bam, tree. But yeah, like, um, brushes are like, like, oh, I can use like, you can't handle the trees. But yeah, like, custom brushes, as I say, they're not like an essential step. Like, I know a lot of artists, like, there's a big Warhammer artist, Adrian Smith, who's a huge inspiration on me. And he does like some funny interviews and live demos, and people are like, what brushes do you use? And he's like, I just use one brush. And I was like, what? So, yeah, if you see his way, you can like, what? But, um, so yeah, it's definitely not um, an essential part of it, but it just it helps when you're doing quick work um, and when you want a desired kind of effect. But, yeah, I think that's a question, man. And so I just to Yeah, um, yeah, uh, Photoshop is uh, what I've only used so far. Um, there's a lot of other programs you can use, uh, like Painter and like, all these kind of more uh, free ones. Um, Photoshop now though, they have like a monthly kind of subscription service instead of you know having to pay thousands of dollars to buy everything. Um, so for like 10 bucks a month, 
uh, I'm getting Chrono Shock, the latest version, and then you also get uh, Lightroom, which is a uh, editing program for phones. But yeah, you know, it, it just yeah, whatever works for you. I'm, I'm yet to try uh, 3D kind of programs. Uh, when you get way further into like you know, concept art, and uh, you have to get really quick, like you know. You're expected to do like industry level stuff every day. A lot of top level artists they'll model and like set up a pose in a 3D software and then they'll completely paint over it and use a combination of the two. And it's not essential but it's becoming more and more used, uh, especially in film and you know it's, uh, very competitive industries like that where you need a strong understanding of a 3D kind of program as well as a Photoshop program. Uh, but yeah, you know, if you're just experimenting, you, know, you can get a lot of free, uh, free programs too, where you, you use 3D models. Um, I have it myself, but it's something I really still want to try. And I guess, yeah, you know, that, that says that you can now stop learning it, and um, it's never a problem to, like, be a uh, amateur or something. Um, if you're not, you know, finding art a little bit difficult or finding like, oh, this is really struggling, you're not really learning anything. So you just gotta like um, keep putting in, you know, the, the hours and just keep practicing at it because I mean everyone's on the same kind of amount of time, right? Here, pretty much. So um, you've gotta just keep putting in the hours and. Stuff like that, I guess. Um, <laughs> kind of that, but yeah, I hope that answers the question there. No worries. Um, so yeah, now that this guy's looking pretty sexy, I um, might add some blood splatters. Maybe he's just beating somebody up with this mallet kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is just get a blood, kind of a blood brush and then set it to overlay again and then I can just add splatters and you can even add more there and it's, yeah, it's like a, a great way of doing it um, if you want to add bloody effects but another cool way to do is uh, and there's a guy on YouTube that I've met this from called Ross Tran is uh, what is it? Color dodge. Yeah. So if you want to like add a interesting highlight, you can just add a uh, color dodge layer, and it will just make it kind of pop. You want like an airbrush kind of thing, and then it might like give a nice highlight to the side of the piece. So yeah, do you have any other uh, questions at all? Anybody? Yeah. I think you can just say it, I might be able to. Yep. So the question was what uh, daily practices and exercises would you recommend? Um, yeah, that's a really good one. Um, you know, um, try a whole different uh, bunch of stuff. Uh, I'd, yeah, I'd recommend uh, joining maybe a life growing group. Um, you can also find great resources online for this. Um, I think gesturedrawings.com or just, just search in Google and you can find like a whole range of um, you know they, they put up a slideshow and you can just set yourself goals and then like maybe for a minute for each one and then it just shows you a whole bunch of either you know nude or closed models and you just get into the habit of really sketching them really quickly um, and because you're forced to do that it, like it's really makes you learn, it makes you not worry about it so much and it's a great way to do it and once you've walked up with like one or two minute poses you can move to like maybe a 10 minute pose and then maybe 15 and then maybe a whole hour and um, yeah, just the human body is like probably the hardest thing to grow because you know, as humans we can just tell when something isn't right with the face or with the body um, but you know, it's so if you can just like, I don't know, jump in the deep end that way and just do a ton of like portraits and you know, maybe draw your friends while you're out or a coffee break or anything like that. But um, 
So yeah, do lots of combinations of humans and people. Um, if you have any other specific interests, um, yeah, definitely draw what you're interested in. You don't want to be like, okay, I have to draw everything. Um, it's, it's easier to start it in chunks because um, you can just get so overwhelmed um, by how much you know practice you need to do. So it's great to, uh, to like, okay, today I'm just going to draw like legs or like feet or like you know noses. And just break it down because um, yeah, break it down now. Because um, yeah, it's like it's, it should be fun. And if, you know, if you're getting really you know, annoyed and tired, just take a break, go outside, you know, go for a run, get some get some uh, inspiration. Um, it's good to like yeah, like live life because um, life is a great inspiration for art. Like it's, you know. I find that like, I spend a lot of time at home, and because I, I work from home, it's, I can get into the routine of just working, with, and then like, I'm finding myself getting all pent up and really anxious and too much coffee, and then like, I just like, okay, I need, a, need some space, I need to go outside, and I will you know, maybe go for a walk, or go to run for a friend's house, and take my sketch pad, and it's so much more easy just to draw when you're in you know, kind of a different environment, and, but yeah, I mean, as far as routine, I'm probably not the best person to ask because I still have to figure that out myself too much. But um, yeah, you know, um, setting a time for yourself and um, you know, maybe the night before writing down like, a list of things to do. I find I'm really getting better at uh, you know, meeting deadlines and stuff like that by just writing it out physically. It, uh, it really helps. Um, there's a lot of great, you know, like self-help kind of books that you can find and stuff like that on the topics. But as far as, um, yeah, it's just you need to like, because when you like write it down, sorry, I'm kind of rambling because I'm trying to pick and drop. But um, yeah, you write it down and then like you sleep on it and then when you wake up, your brain is kind of processed that little, and then you're like, okay, time to do stuff. And you, you can like put little boxes and then just tick them off. And even set small goals because once you start doing the small ones, you'll be like, okay, bam, I did it, bam, bam, bam. And even if you don't do everything, you can just write it again for tomorrow. And if you keep writing the same goal, like out again, you'll be like, okay, I'm going to do it now. You don't want to write it, so it helps you in that way too. Um, but yeah, you know, just setting a timer as well is a great way. Um, you can like, uh, just, even if you want to draw for like an hour, maybe like set a timer for every 10 minutes just to like check in with yourself and see how much you've done in that time. Um, it's like a great way to just also learn how much time an hour is. And you know, you get a sense of how much time it is and then how much you've got done it. And if that's good enough, then you say, yep, yeah, okay, I'm gonna keep this and keep working on it. But if not, you're like, that was 10 minutes of work and it's not good, so I'm gonna do another. And start another piece. Um, but yeah, you know, um, just keep practicing and you'll get there, I think. <laughs> <That's just interesting. laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the answer to the question was, is this available to download anyway? Um, I should be getting it recorded. Hello. Thank you very much, by the way. Volunteers. Woo! <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it should be recorded and then I'll be putting it straight up on my YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, and then you can also check out my YouTube channel. You can also check out my YouTube channel for additional stuff, as, as I've plugged before. Um, I, I direct everyone there, um, and even though I don't have the most extensive like channel full of uh, you know, stuff I've done myself, I always I have a section for great art channels. So you can just completely see all the ones I learned from. And, podcasts and like tutorials and there's a lot of great resources online so you just kind of need a place to find them and um, you know looking at artists and uh, what they use is a great way of doing it so yeah I just wanted to touch on the uh, a little bit of thing here so with this lovely tattoo you can see I'm kind of warping it around the shape so what you want to do is definitely think about the three-dimensional form you've got. And even like when you're doing a lot of lines, you want to have all the lines kind of
kind of like going in the direction that the shape is moving. Um, so, you know, for instance, if I just shaded it straight and was like, like that, it just looks so much more flat. But if you have it like walking around the shapes, it really does help um, accentuate the form. But yeah, that was just a little half tip there. Um, so yeah, were there any other questions at all, people? No, we